Yeah, g'day heathers and gentlemen, and welcome back to my channel, where I've been working on modernizing this beautiful old Shelblin 125 CNC lathe. Unfortunately, the home switches are not working, so let's try and fix them. I had these working, I tested them, I think there's even a video about it, and then they stopped working, and that's bad. These home sensors are hall sensors, so they need 5 volt power. Long time viewers might remember that I reversed a phase in neutral and damaged some of my components, but the 5 volt stuff should have been protected because this 5 volt power supply accepts up to 480 and I only provided 400. Just need to loosen this up a bit to get some motion in the wire to be able to move my sensor around. Maybe I should block up that junction box so that it doesn't dangle on wires. Before we go any further, let's just check we're getting the right power. So here we should have 5 volt DC. Okay, which we do. That's the power supply for this bank. I just want to check that all the inputs are working on this Mesa card. So here's 5 volts. As I touch it to each of my input pins, I should get a signal change. Yep, that's good. So that means that all of the input pins are working correctly. So the second check I can do is with a magnet affecting the hall sensor, I should be able to turn on one of those pins. I think it's pin number two for the z-axis. And nothing happens. So if a 5 volt signal arrives at this board, it'll be read and shown in Linux CNC. Now we need to find out why is the signal not arriving. How am I powering these things? Well. Okay, this is my 5 volt rail, that's fine. This temporary yellow and green wire powers my sensors. This is the yellow and green wire here. This terminal block's not going to be in the final installation. I just did it for a test setup because the cable that comes out of the machine, this one, is not long enough while everything's half disassembled on the table. Yellow and green, 5 volts, quick check. Now here, I'm not getting 5 volts. I wonder if I've got a short in there somewhere. Okay, that result wasn't logical, so I've just disconnected those two power lines. These are This is the 5 volt coming in. Okay, I've got it back to front, but that's 5 volt, that's correct. So I'm guessing that I've got a short on the 5 volt wiring out to the sensors. This pin's 45 and 46, and I've got a short circuit. Now I've just got to find it. So what have I got here? These two wires, this red and this yellow, are the 5 volt and the ground coming in. There's these terminal blocks. So either I've got these two shorting in the wire back to the controller, or I've got a short in one of the whites and browns continue out to the three sensors. So maybe I've got a short out that side. So I'll just disconnect some connectors here and start probing with the multimeter and try and work out where that short's occurring. So here's the power lines coming in and there's no short there. Where's the terminal blocks? Are shorted. Aha! Uh -huh. I think I might have found the problem. I hope you can see this. Shelblin has put a smoothing capacitor across those two power lines and when I rearranged all the cables to make the these big motor connectors fit, I think I've touched the leads of the capacitor in such a way that I'm creating a short. I untwisted those leads of the capacitors and sure enough, my short went away. So now let's get that magnet under there again. Oh, not gonna get a signal till I power it back up again. Let's try that out with a magnet. Aha, all right. Okay, this is my HAL, and you can see I've now connected the Z-axis home switch to pin 2, and also my X-axis home switch to pin 0. And I've set up a watch on those, so the signal comes in from pin 2, goes it's named signal Z home switch, and gets fed into Linux CNC joint 1 home switch, and the same for X. Now if we just shift these over, so I can still see them while it's jogging, 
Okay, that works on Z. And on X. Wow, I'm really relieved about that. I was concerned I was going to have to disassemble everything again and make up some new sensors with maybe reed switches and because they're a very special shape I would have had to have molded them into epoxy, made a circuit board, all that stuff so I'm glad I don't have to do any of that. Now I can continue with configuring the homing. Right, I've now put a bit of time and work into setting up my home switches and I've now got both axes uh, set for 3 meters per minute of rapid speeds. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm not homing at full speed, only about roughly half. This is what full speed looks like. I've got my soft limits set up. I can run to soft limits at full speed without causing any problems. end up with about 450 millimeters of Z travel, about 184 millimeters of X travel. It could probably go way faster than this, but yeah, I'm, that's more than fast enough for me. It's only a small machine. I would like to say a big thank you to Walt, who's a control system specialist. He contacted me and we had a telecom together where he went through and helped me with some of the basics of setting up the control system. He gave me a bunch of homework to get it up to about this stage. I'd like to do one more session with him to try and see if I can optimize it a little bit more. There was quite a high pitched tone when the drives are activated. I'm wondering whether we can maybe suppress that a little bit. But all in all, it's about ready to do something. Now I know what to look out for while I'm packing these wires back in. It's all pretty tight here. Throw that lid on and then check it again with the multimeter. This junction box cover plate needs a seal on it, but I won't do that yet because I know I'm going to be back in here. I'm not using coolant at the moment, so it doesn't really matter. It's just to keep the swarf out. What's next? I should cut something, but before I do, it's time to put on some way wipers. My wife was talking to Heather today and she pointed out that the last videos have been a bit boring. There really haven't been enough sparks, so this is for you Heather. Oh man, I hate doing holes based on measurements. They never line up. Right, enough mucking around. I put the tool holder back on. Let's 
try it out. I've loaded up three tool holders. You know, one thing that's weird about these tool holders, Shellbloom put this taper on the bottom so that they don't stand up straight. Drives me nuts. I don't really understand what it's there for because it's underneath. Either you're gonna have clearance or you're not gonna have clearance, right? When I make some more of these, they're not gonna have that. So that's homed. This material which I'm working with, it's fine as scrap binium. I'm guessing it's probably just some sort of mild steel. This is just a quick handwritten G-code file. I put no effort into trying to get perfect speeds and speeds so the surface finish won't be special. As you can see, I don't yet have the spindle brakes set up. Set to take three spring passes. Well, I'm not going to pretend that that's anything special. It's just a fake M15 by one millimeter pitch. But hey, making progress. So that all seems like a pretty significant step forward. I've still got a bit of work to do. I've still got a lot of work to do to set up the whole spindle motor drive stuff. But I think the next thing I'm going to do is to be to wire up the pneumatics module. Because once that's wired into the rest of the system, that's kind of the last of the major wiring components it's where I need this stuff out on the bench for like troubleshooting. So once that's wired in and tested, I can finally put all of this stuff into the control cabinet where it belongs. Thanks for watching this episode and I'll see you next time.